Day two has arrived. I made it through day one pretty well. Had a really nice breakfast this morning. It was like this banana, fried rice, eggs, potato thing. Ironically, it was actually maybe a little bit too much for me. I felt you know compelled to eat the whole thing because I didn't made it, but I don't usually eat that much for breakfast. I know a lot of people say you gotta eat a big breakfast, but I find it slows me down. So I might cut back a little bit on the breakfast, keep it more simple and uh, have a really nice lunch. And I like to have a big dinner. I find that having a big dinner just like kind of ends the day. Like you've done your stuff, you've worked out, you've had a good time, you've worked, whatever, time to eat a big dinner. Feeling pretty good. I went to a couple places yesterday and today I just stopped in Starbucks to refill my uh, sugar packets. I have to say, so far the biggest thing I'm taking away is I've really been a lot more conscious with not just the food that I'm eating, but they can try not to waste anything. Like in the past, if the scallions are a little bruised up, I'd probably just cut the tops off and toss it. But now it's like, no, like use as much humanly possible as you can. Hey, you gotta appreciate the little things. I watched a documentary yesterday, uh, Living on a Dollar. These guys, these two dudes, went with a small film crew to Guatemala, lived for two months off a dollar a day, and to sort of simulate what it would be like to live in these really poor villages in Guatemala. And granted, like the food's a lot cheaper and everything there, it was, it was really eye-opening. It was really cool to see. And it reminded me of just how fortunate I am in this world and how much you gotta appreciate that stuff. One of the best ways to save a lot of money is to get your own dried beans. I know what you're thinking, oh the can, just open the can, pour the can, it's done. No, that's like, it gets mushy, it's cooked in the can, so there's all kinds of stuff going on. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with canned beans, but you get a lot more bang. We like the bang for our buck if you buy the dried beans. All you have to do Take a bag of dried beans, soak them overnight, and then just boil them like so. I add some salt, right? And just bring them to a boil and just keep cooking them until they get really fork tender. You'll have delicious beans. You'll see like if you've never had the straight up, you know, dried beans cooked, so much better. The canned beans are mushy, there's no texture. These things will have texture, they'll be meaty, and then you could overcook them and get them really mushy. I'm gonna probably take some make like some black bean burgers out of some, use the other ones just to eat with some rice. There's a lot of things you can do, but if you do it dried first, you get so many more options. All right, so I'm making these little French fries. I'm gonna cut them up into fries, and then I'm actually putting them with the boiling beans. I've never done that before. I don't really know what's gonna happen, but they're in this little basket, so they get to sort of stay in their own little world over there while still mixing with the flavors of the beans and getting soft, so when I do fry them, they will get extra, extra crispy. And I'm just having some fun. I don't really know what exactly is gonna happen. But you, know, you never know, you just gotta cook and have a good time. So cabbage is one of my favorite things to cook, and the reason I bought it, not just because it's cheap, but because it holds up really well. Unlike lettuce, which can spoil quickly, the cabbage, you can pickle it, you can turn it into sauerkraut, you can fry it up, you can eat it fresh. In this case, I'm doing a little slaw, so I just kinda chop up the cabbage, I'm gonna peel a bunch of carrots, and then I just toss them together. I'm adding some lime juice, I'm not doing the mayo one, just a little lime juice, salt, pepper, some vinegar, and a little bit of lime zest. Keep it really fresh, it's gonna sit in your fridge for a while, it's gonna keep tasting better as it goes. This challenge isn't about surviving off $3 a day, it's about surviving off $3 a day like an ultimate badass, like thriving. I'm talking, you bring this food to work, you bring this food to school, to lunch, and your friends are looking around like, man, what are you eating? I wanna eat some of that. And they won't even know you're spending three bucks a day. They're thinking you're spending like $30 a meal, but that's bullshit. The average person in New York probably spends 10 to $20 for lunch. One meal, and you could do that in a whole week. Think about it. Think about how much more money you could be saving to get that new house you wanted, or that new ring, or that new garage car opener, whatever. All right, so now at this point, what I actually want to do is two things. One, this is a newer technique I've been playing around with. Since they're fork tender, I kind of just take a fork to them and sort of just go like this, go like this, go like this. But what I've been doing is just sort of scoring potato a little bit. It's gonna help, when you put it in the freezer, it's gonna help sort of dry out these pockets. You're creating these little pockets of air that create surface space. So when you fry it, what's gonna happen is all that surface space is gonna get crispy. Like if I were to just fry this, it's just gonna fry like straight line, but if I have all these little bits and pieces and stuff, it's all gonna get crispy and you're gonna get extra crisp ability. See, you don't wanna mess with the extra crisp ability. I'll just pop these in a freezer. And the best way to freeze something really quickly is to kind of spread it out. So maybe you just put 
make sure they each have their own little area on this plate. Don't like pile them on top or put them in a bag, but put them in an open plate, you know, or a wire rack or something. Pop them in the freezer, they'll, fr you know, they'll freeze up in like an hour. Not necessarily the best deep boner of chicken bones. And I noticed that I got a lot of meat on them. I mean, this, this is better than I used to do, but this is still pretty poor. There's a lot of meat on there. So I was always trying to figure out what I could do with this. And I would make stock, and I'm gonna do the stock, but before the stock, is there anything I can do to get like a one, two, three layer on this experience? So what I figured out is if you take these bones and you just fry them up in a little bit of oil and then toss them in the sauce, they become these like sort of mini buffalo wings. It doesn't have as much meat, but you still get a lot of meat to kind of get that suck on the juices. You can put a little salt on them, then you just fry them up and uh, I'll show you right now. The whole point of this challenge is to show you how to you know, eat cheap, eat deliciously, and eat creatively on a budget, but also avoid fast food. That being said, I did sneak into Taco Bell yesterday and I stole a bunch of their hot sauces. Smoky in this bitch. As you're frying these wings up, it's gonna get smoky, but don't worry about that because they start tasting so delicious. The more crispy and the smoke and the sauce, everything just coming together and having a good time. Partying in the world of deliciousness, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, let's give these Taco Bell wings a try. You know, the funny thing is when you're cooking uh, in these ways and these challenges, sometimes you come up with the most creative things that have never been done before. I can almost guarantee you, no one has made chicken thigh bone buffalo wings with Taco Bell sauce. Whoa. Oh my god. That is incredible. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. There's a good amount of meat on here, surprisingly. So I basically just took the chicken bones, some water, um, one onion and some of that cabbage, like the bottom part of the cabbage is a little harder. I'm just gonna cook that down and make this sort of chicken bone broth. And I know three bones of chicken, like small thigh bones, doesn't seem like that much, but when it cooks down, it's gonna make a super flavorful stock, which I can then actually, if I really cook down, use as more of a sauce. So it's gonna be just a delicious enhancer for everything that I have. Again, the more you can pull flavor out of stuff when you're eating cheap and budgetly, the better. Good. So excited about the chicken stock. Freaking blocked away for like 20 minutes. I was on high, I forgot, and I burnt the crap out of it. Trying to salvage it now, I basically took the bones. They were kind of burnt, but I chopped them in half to try to get more flavor out of them and took the top of what wasn't completely burnt. Put it in a pan, I added some pepper and some water. I'm boiling it again. Hope I don't make the same damn mistake. I was so excited about that chicken stock. But one thing, when things go wrong in the kitchen, sometimes you end up creating something completely new and different that you would have never made had you not fucked up. So I'm definitely praying for a miracle here. Wish me luck. All right, got those fries out of the freezer. And they kind of look like this now. See, the cold, getting a little cold to the touch. Shoot my chopsticks down, but they won't fall. They are titanium. You shoot them down, but they won't fall. They are titanium. <laughs> These chickpeas, I'm just gonna keep. Basically simple, I cooked them earlier today. I just salted them, and honestly they taste delicious. They do remind me, cooked just like this with salt, a little bit like a really good hard boiled egg. So I just kept frying those potatoes. They actually, like the french fries, they were like blackened because of the black beans, which is cool. And I just kind of popped them on. This is a nice little lunch, uh, like slaw with french fries and chickpeas. And then later on came dinner, and dinner I just wanted to keep things really, really simple. So I just kind of made this fried rice with beans. I fried up some tortillas, just right in the flame. And it was a nice, it was like a nice, very hearty filling thing. I fried up another tortilla on the side, some pickled veg. And the, so far, you know, day two, the challenge has been incredible. Uh, day three is when things start to get pretty weird and delicious. I've kept it quite simple, but now I kind of 
pickling things and getting things prepped, but stuff is about to get extra weird on the Brothers Green. Stick around. <laughs> 